abundant energy in harmony with nature, passive solar cooling, by Larry Hartweg, Zedmaster at ZeroEnergyDesign.com. It is easy to understand solar heating. Just leave your car out in the sun. But how can we use basic solar science to cool buildings in hot, humid climates? We've learned a lot about it since President Jimmy Carter's 1978 solar energy tax credits. The December 19, 2007 U.S. Energy Independence and Security Act provides new funds for solar air conditioning. ZeroEnergyDesign.com has all the answers. Abundant energy in harmony with nature. Our very first Zero Energy Design home was built in 1979 under President Jimmy Carter's solar energy tax credits in the central United States where the summer high temperature was 110 degrees Fahrenheit and the winter low was 10 below zero. It both heated and cooled itself with passive solar heating and cooling technology. We have designed hundreds of solar buildings that have only gotten better since then. The extensive details are available in our 800-page CD-ROM ebook. Let's begin with some solar cooling basic physics. Heat is transferred by conduction, convection, and radiation. In the summer, downward radiation from our 9,990 degree sun is the most important solar design factor. On the hottest summer afternoon, would you rather be outside in the hot summer sunshine or inside in your attic, which is often a deadly 150 degrees? In stark contrast, zero energy design attics are cooler than peak outside air temperature. Conventional, carelessly designed and constructed roofs are the worst possible summer design. Instead of acting like a shade tree, they act like a solar furnace, making your attic unbearably hot and greatly increasing your building cooling cost. The only possibly dumber thing you could do would be to run air conditioning ductwork in your attic, which can lose half of the cooling capacity you pay for. Zero Energy Design uses bright, shiny white cool roof to reflect summer solar radiation. This concept has been used in tropical regions for centuries. Trim can be painted any accent color. Landscaping adds street appeal color. The idea of a white house is nothing new. Very soon, dark colored roofs in hot climates will be a sign of obsolete thinking. Smooth white metal galvalum roof is a modern, low cost, cool roof option. It has excellent weather resistance near salt water and has been used in places like the Florida Keys for a long time. Radiant barriers are nothing more than commonly available aluminum foil. You've been able to buy it in the grocery store for decades for around three cents a square foot. It's simply glued to construction materials. If you hold aluminum foil between your face and the bright summer sun, it reflects about 97 percent of the solar radiation. It also has very low emissivity, which means even if it gets hot, it does not radiate the energy into your home. In locations with air conditioning requirements, radiant barriers should be used on the roof and the walls. To be effective, it must have at least a three-quarter inch air gap that can convect any excess heat buildup away. Metal radiant barriers such as aluminum foil are highly conductive. To be effective they must not touch adjacent materials on at least one side. One very inexpensive way to install radiant barriers is to purchase material that is glued to the bottom side of your roof decking. This way there's no additional labor charge. A white cool roof plus low emissivity radiant barriers result in a much cooler attic. A dark roof will get 185 degrees in the sun versus a cool roof that only gets 110 degrees. This significantly reduces your air conditioning requirement. Radiant barriers under your roofing material 
further block 97% of roof radiation. A zero energy design attic is cooler than peak exterior air temperature. If your attic gets hotter than outside air, it is poorly designed and constructed. Green roofs have been popular in Europe for thousands of years. Plants on the rooftop provide evaporative cooling in addition to insulation. This prevents the solar heat from the sun from entering the building. Europe has extensive recommendations for using plants that do not require irrigation or maintenance. This Central Florida design intrigues us greatly. It looks like it was built into a perfect cave in the hillside, but it actually was raised up from plain flat land. The faux stone was created with spray-on shotcrete that was then shaped with a trowel to look like natural stone. The tall xeriscaping on the roof is essentially zero maintenance. The passive earth shelter effect keeps this type of construction cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Solar-powered energy recovery ventilation systems control humidity while ensuring a large volume of continuous filtered fresh air. An equator-facing solarium and light tubes can be designed in to provide abundant daylighting throughout the home. This natural appearance appeals to some free thinkers, but not everyone. It is merely one view of zero energy design, passive solar, possibility thinking. On June 21st, the North Pole tilts toward the sun 23 and a half degrees, making it summer in the Northern Hemisphere and winter in the Southern Hemisphere. On December 21st, the North Pole tilts away from the sun 23 and a half degrees. Earth's annual path around the sun plus Earth's 23 and a half degree rotational axis tilt create a 47 degree difference in the position of the sun. This is critical to zero energy design. The low winter sun allows direct solar gain all day long, but the 47 degree higher summer sun can be easily blocked with overhangs that are designed for the specific latitude, the distance from the equator, and climate. In this 1982 zero energy design home, notice the shape of the overhang. The higher peak extends out further than the lower portion. In the northern hemisphere, the winter sun rises in the southeast, peaks out at a very low angle above the southern horizon, and then sets in the southwest. It is on the south equator side of the house all day long. Vertical south-facing equator side glass is excellent for capturing winter solar thermal energy. In contrast, in the summer the sun rises in the northeast, peaks out nearly straight overhead depending on your latitude, and then sets in the northwest. The sun is essentially not on the south side of the house in the summer. To understand precise window placement, we must first be familiar with the seasonal path of the sun. No one can design a zero energy building without knowing its environmental conditions. For much more detailed passive solar heating and cooling information, see PassiveSolarEnergy.info and ZeroEnergyDesign.com.